pals a new day but we are going to be talking about old books i am coming back with a second video from the from the archives series if you would like to watch the first video in this series i will link it down below in this series i talk about books that i have read and loved before I started my booktube channel. So with this video, I am starting it off with Rachel Cusk's seventh book called The Bradshaw Variations, which was published in 2009. So I read this in January 2022, and the basic premise is that Thomas Bradshaw and Tony Swan are in a settled marriage that has slipped into staleness. Tony accepts a big promotion as a department head at her job and explores the possibilities of her life beyond uh, wifehood and motherhood to their one child. Meanwhile, uh, Thomas becomes a stay-at-home dad and contemplates domesticity and his level of success in comparison to his siblings. Thomas's parents, uh, two brothers, their wives and Thomas's and Tony's lodger Olga, who is a Polish immigrant, all have their own narratives within this novel as well. Cusk is known for writing characters with acute realism and expressing through them the fluidity of thoughts and the variety of anxieties that people have. In this case, she is creating a portrait of family dynamics, marital tension, and the different ways people of varying privilege and circumstance navigate through the world. For instance, uh, Tony is Cusk's prototypical, high-achieving, sharply observant female protagonist. Despite her mental acuity and obvious talents for her job, she still is fighting against the inherent sexism within academia. At one point, she contemplates, by now, it is almost sexual. Her desire to be penetrated by a question, but nobody asks her one. Leo, Thomas's brother, experiences an emotional distance from his family while acknowledging the idea that familial love often feels like a responsibility more than an instinct. One section um, from his narrative that I appreciate. It's always the same. The difficulty of being himself with these people, his family. The difficulty of locating his own authenticity. He says things he doesn't feel, and what he feels most keenly, he doesn't say at all. Olga, the lodger, lives in this liminal space where she is both a resident and an outsider within the Bradshaw home. Cusk writes, She stands in the room with the velvet sofa, where she is never invited, where they sit in the evenings and talk. The image alone of a velvet sofa conveys a sense of rank and advantage that Olga is unable to attain for herself. As a cumulative piece, the Bradshaw variations is knitted together by vignettes of each person's personality and interior turmoil. A traditional plot doesn't exist in the Cusk canon. What you get with her work, and pointedly in this one, is fragmented reality and, and really a mirror to your own identity. If you read and like this novel, um, you should read Cusk's other works, but I would also suggest *In Delicacy* by Amina Kane. The second book I want to talk about is *Too Much: How Victorian Constraints Still Bind Women Today* by Rachel Verona Cote. This was published in 2020, and I read it in March of that year. Take responsibility at all because we were. This book is a blend of historical nonfiction and memoir where Cote critiques white heteronormative propriety and a culture that prioritizes masculine profusion and incorporates her own specialty knowledge of Victorian history and her own personal experiences as a victim of sexism. On paper, this book may seem more like a niche choice, but even if you're not wholly interested in Victorian England, there's value in Coates' examination of pop culture from 1800 to now in the 21st century. There's a unique interweaving of things like the Bronte sisters and 
Lana Del Rey and like the image that she cultivates for herself. For example, uh, coat contrasts, Lana Del Rey's digestible old Hollywood genteel sensuality, the fucked up but glamorous white-faced uh, beauty queen against the specifically Western perception of the black body. Um, in one section she writes, Too muchness is thrust upon women of color as a stigmatizing permanent condition before they have the opportunity to claim it as something less vituperative. And so we fleeing assumptions, self-indulgent, outsized cravings for drug and sex, and punish extravagantly. The undercurrent of Victorian history really bolsters the standards to which non-male people, non-white people are beholden to. It's in classic literary characters like George Eliot's uh, Dorothea Brooke from Middlemarch, Jane Bennett from Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, that have contributed to how much of Western culture understands perfect femininity. If you read and like this book, I would have to suggest Ruth Goodman's How to Be a Victorian and also Miranda K. Pennington's memoir A Girl Walks Into a Book with the Brontes taught me about life, love, and women's work. Also, I really quickly just wanted to show you properly the reading nook that I recently made where I was just filming because I love it, and Otis loves it. That's our cat who likes to lay there sometimes, but here it is. Sun is shining, and this is just the absolute sweetest spot to sit. That's all I have for you today, another short one, but I really enjoy talking about books that I have read pre-booktube. Now that I am on five months here, I just, there's so many other books that I've read that I never had the chance to discuss with other readers and now I'm here <laughs> bringing them up and I'm hoping that you guys can comment and discuss amongst each other with me. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. I post every Wednesday and Saturday and I will see you in the next video. Bye!